This is a training video for the joystick rear suspension system. Check to make sure that you have a bushing kit as shown here, a plastic bag containing a C-block. Some kits will contain two screws depending on the model of the car, three hinge pins, and a D-block. Race cars control the front suspension with an A-block and a B-block and the rear with a C block and a D block. We'll focus on the C and D blocks. This is a C block, this is a D block, and these are hinge pins. The C block and the D block have bushings on the inside. The bushings are what hold the hinge pins in place. We'll be adjusting bushings to adjust the hinge pin angles. This is a single dot center line diamond bushing with the arrow pointed into the center of the car. Arrows will always be on the opposite side of the dot markings. A primary offset and a secondary offset. All bushings have a primary offset and a secondary offset. This one is shown with the offset and the center position. When you hear the term center line, it's referring to the secondary offset, not the primary. The primary offset will be marked by one to seven dots as shown here. This is a zero degree primary offset on a center line. This is a two dot one degree offset and a three dot two degree offset all on the center line of the secondary offset. Secondary offset. This is a zero degree secondary offset known as a center line. This is a one half degree offset marked by a single dot on the side of the bushing. And there's also a full one degree offset in the secondary position. The one degree and the center line are similar in markings, but are visibly different in hole alignment. Bushings can go in several directions. In the D block, it can have an arrow pointing in, or it can have an arrow pointing out, depending on what the chart says to do. For the C block, it can be up or down, depending on what the chart says to do. Once you've got the correct bushing in place, depending on whether there's a secondary offset, look for a black bushing with the same markings that will be a mirror image of it for the opposite side of the car. The yellow line here indicates a zero degree toe angle. Zero degree toe is good for a straight line, but we'll be going around curves. If you look at the rear axles in blue, this represents a three degree toe in. By having a three degree toe in angle, we shift the wheel angle to face the center of the car slightly, as represented in green. Let's take a closer look and see how this actually affects the car. As the car is going around a curve, Shifting the toe in puts the outside tire at a closer angle to the curve. You can see how the yellow at zero degrees toe is not facing as inward as the green. Some people think this doesn't matter because the inside tire is pushing to the outside. But in actuality, the entire car shifts when it goes through the corner. Force is transferred from the inside of the car through the roll center to the outer tire. Down pressure is then applied to the outer tire. As the pressure goes down on the outside, it raises up on the inside, making the inside tire virtually non-existent in a turn. Now let's take a look at anti-squat and roll center. Looking at the back suspension, Anti-squat is going to be determined by the position of the hinge pin vertically through the car. This is a three degree anti-squat setting which is stock for most cars. This is how the car pushes through the body of the car. You can raise or lower to change the angle at which you hit the center of gravity of the car. Now let's take a look at roll center. Roll center is a little bit easier to figure out. Roll center takes the anti-squat line and just moves it up or down depending on how you want the car to handle. 
All right, let's get going on some details. This is a D block with two single dot center line bushing diamonds. We're going to flip that up and look at it like we're looking at the back of the car. I'm going to put the C block up in front of us that's got the same bushings in it, stock settings for most cars. And then I'm going to look through that back D block to see what's going on. So I'm superimposing this. So now what we've got is the one dot diamond center line with the hinge pins. We're going to take that one dot diamond in the C block and we're going to change it out for a one dot diamond with a one degree offset. And you will visibly be able to see the whole offset differently. So now to compensate for that in the back D block, we're going to have to put in a two dot center line. So this will actually move that hinge pin out and widen the body of the car. Now let's go to the other side. On the other side of the car, if we use a one dot diamond with a one degree offset, it's going to be offset to the wrong side. So we're going to have to turn that upside down so that we see the offset to the outside of the car. Once again, with a two dot center line for the rear. Now let's take a look at the charts. The charts are very important. They'll be how you do the majority of your changing settings. You've got the stock settings chart. You've also got the bushing primary offset chart. It's a good idea to go ahead and memorize this one because you're going to be using it a lot. This is a C block chart for a Mugen. All of the charts are car specific. So if you have a Mugen car, you need to make sure you're dealing with Mugen charts or associated charts or, or what have you. This is a D-block chart, once again for a Mugen, and the D-block charts are the same. They are car specific. So if we look at the Mugen MBX6, we see that we have a stock 2.5 degree anti-squat. That shows up number one in the chart and is referenced by a one dot diamond bushing. We're going to change that out and go with two degrees anti-squat, which is a five dot down bushing. Here we have a five dot down bushing in the C-block. Notice the orientation, it is pointed down. This is for a standard body width. Let's play a little bit and let's transfer this to a wide body just so you get a feel for the different bushings and what they're used for. First, we're gonna look at the toe end and make sure that we're gonna get the toe end that we want. While we're changing stuff, we might as well change from a two and three quarter stock toe end, a one dot diamond toe end. And we're gonna change that out and go with a two and a half degree toe end, which is a four dot end. So this is what a four dot in will look like in the D block. Notice the orientation pointed in. Now this is the orientation for a standard body width. Now you're gonna have a standard, a narrow, and a wide. Uh, not for all settings, but for a good many of them. So now let's go back and see what it takes to make a wide setting. Here's the standard C block. Now let's look at a 3.0 degree anti-squat. This is going to be a five dot up as opposed to the five dot down that we were dealing with a minute ago. If you look here, this is the five dot down we were looking at a minute ago. And the one degree offset for a wide body is to the outside of the car. Now, when we look at the five dot up, you'll notice that the offsets to the inside of the car. This is not going to work for a wide body setting. So we'll take the black mirror image of the five dot and we will swap sides with it and now we have the offset to the outside to make a wide body like we intended to do. Take the white and put it in the other side and now we have a wide body setting. All you have left to do is to go back to the chart, the D block chart, find the setting that you want on the D block wide chart and put those in the D block. And there you go. Play with it till you know it. There are a lot more settings. Stay tuned for the joystick configuration Android app. And let's go reset.